How's it going everyone, Javiti here with a forging tutorial on how to forge Lucent Gear. If you're unfamiliar, Lucent Gear is the highest level of gear in the game currently and therefore also the hardest to forge. And when I say forge Lucent Gear, I mean actually max out all three booms that are possible to put on said gear. Uh, so yeah, that is a fairly impressive feat and I have to give out a huge shout out and thanks to Wake and Bake for sharing his technique for doing this. Uh, he kind of more or less challenged anybody to find a more efficient way to do this. Uh, he likes to kind of min-max and optimize uh, processes and balance or just games in general, I suppose. And this has kind of been his solution to uh, forging. A few notes that you do need to forge one piece of gear at a time. That's because, well, if you try to forge even two pieces of gear, that means for every step you're going to be using two items items instead of one and you're just simply going to run out of items before you ever get anywhere close to finishing the process. Another thing is that this is probably not the most practical thing so it's not like you're going to be running around using Lucent everything for your everyday tasks. This does take upwards of 300-400 steps of forging so that is a lot of items. They're also pretty expensive items or at least one of them is expensive. The rest are relatively cheap. Uh, it's mostly this defect removal solvent that uses Roadrunner feathers. It's again not that practical but also not exactly practical as far as time usage because it's going to take you upwards of 20, 30, maybe even 40 minutes to forge each piece of gear just to kind of burn through all you know 300 to 400 steps of forging. So that is a significant time sink in just forging each piece of gear. Remember you can only do one at a time but uh, we're going to be showing how to forge probably the most practical loosen items to both use and forge which are grapples so uh, they're a little bit easier because they have less possible boons to roll we will be trying to random roll at least one of those boons uh, so and not to mention grapples they last pretty long and if you're going to splurge on a piece of equipment uh, at least in my opinion it's going to be a grapple but moving along, I'll be doing this video a little bit differently than a lot of my other forging tutorials. I'm going to try to make this as simple and easy as possible. This method, while it does take upwards of like 300 plus forging steps, it's actually a fairly simple forging process. It um, has very few instances where you have to make any kind of real judgment calls or dis hard decisions or anything like that. Uh, it's just a lot of repeating the same stuff over and over because we're gonna have to build a lot of extra vigor a lot of extra stability uh, so you kind of end up doing just the same processes over and over and over so it's more a test of your patience uh, concentration uh, etc so uh, I've broken it down into essentially nine steps, which really will be just the same three to four processes over and over. So for the sake of usability, I'll be putting a lot of information over my character right here. I know you just love looking at this beautiful avatar over here, uh, but really this is wasted real estate. So I'll be putting uh, basically information on kind of the algorithm of how to do each step so you can pause the video and follow along. Uh, and not have to replay the same spot over and over and over just to hear my lovely voice. So let's go ahead, I'll just run through, let's see here, the forging deck and why we're taking what we're taking. So first off we have Corrupted Boom Compound 2. Uh, this Lucent gear, it has very little flexibility on it. So where is it? Yeah, flexibility of 10. So really our effectiveness can only get up to 42%. That means we're only getting 42% of the boon points, which is why we're going with something that gives us 1000 boon points. It also gives us a stacking debuff that adds defect points, which brings us right over here to this defect removal solvent too. Uh, so basically we're not going to worry about any of the defects until the very end of the process and then we'll use these to rip off those defects. 
uh, it's good to note that this is probably the most expensive ingredient right here because they do use roadrunner feathers which are kind of hard to get but the nice thing is is that you don't have to use a single one of these until you get all the way to the end of the process and you know that you're more or less happy with the end product uh, before you start using the real expensive stuff pretty much everything else here is pretty darn cheap uh, moving along, we're going to be uh, using Vigor Catalyst 2 to basically wipe the board clean. It also will give us a lot of energy back. They'll rip off the debuffs from the Corrupted Boon compound as well as get rid of these uh, gums, which uh, will come in handy later. But to go over gums very quickly, uh, each type of equipment, there's only so many different boons that can actually go on that piece of equipment and actually do something. Uh, that set of boons is then divided into categories. Uh, so basically longevity gum for grapples, there will be two different boons in that category. I think grapples have somewhere like seven boons uh, that can even go on them in the first place. So by using the gums, you can target a particular category, making it more likely to get what you want. So. There it is. Uh, so the effect gum, that will target the real in and real out speed, whereas lightness gum will target the projectile speed. That's how fast, once you shoot your grapple, how fast it will travel to the target and then attach to. Next up, we have probably the three most important ingredients. Uh, we have the protection paste too, as well as stabilization paste. This is going to allow us to stretch out our stability, which is gonna be our main limiting factor here. So if you're unfamiliar, protection paste two, that's gonna cut the stability use of ingredients by 50% for four rounds. So uh, right there, we're gonna cut it right in half. And then next up, we have stabilization paste two, and that's for each round, it's gonna give us an extra 50 stability for five rounds. So when you use these two together, each item is gonna use basically 100 stability. So by putting these two uh, ingredients together we can essentially you know for free use items while we have these buffs up so that is going to stretch our stability uh, quite a bit and then finally over here we have invigoration paste one uh, this for five rounds will give us an extra 15 vigor so as we're going through the forging process that will be giving us extra vigor however we're actually going to be using these more just for the stacks of buffs uh, because we can use this vigor catalyst too and for each stack we're going to get back 50 vigor so that is how we're going to build up our vigor we're going to be exploiting the protections paste and stabilization paste along with gums to basically build our stability. Uh, and then finally we have deconstruction resin. That's fairly straightforward. If we mess up or we don't get our random roll, we'll use this as a our get out of jail mostly card. Uh, it has a 75% to return uh, the ingredients used and it's kind of like a, a winner take all or all or nothing so it'll be a 75% roll for each item that we use if we you know to basically a, or we get a saving roll then we get all of that item back then it rolls on the next item and the next item and so on and so forth so if you get back any of your compounds you get back all of them if you don't get back any compounds you lose all of them uh, and then finally setting resin that's just going to finalize the forging process it's a mandatory item that you have to bring along so hopefully that wasn't too long-winded but kind of a brief explanation of why we're taking what we're taking okay so let's quickly go over these steps the first step is well the random roll so what we're going to be trying to get is far-reaching boon and it's pretty straightforward we're going to use corrupted compound 2 uh, until we get our first boon if it's not far reaching we're going to use deconstruction resin and start over this step is can be kind of frustrating because well it's a one in seven chance to get the boon you're actually interested in and yeah sometimes rng not in your favor uh, if the first boon that we do get is the far reaching then we're going to use vigor catalyst to essentially reset all of the debuffs because remember each one of these corrupted compounds is going to add uh, so many stacks of a debuff and we don't want any more defect points than we have to have
Once we finally get our random roll, we're going to build up some vigor. At this point, we're almost in the clear of, you know, not having to deconstruct, but there'll be one more step after this. Uh, we do this right now because we're going to end up using uh, quite a few gums in the next step, and we might as well uh, go straight into building some of those boons. But uh, basically, we're going to build up Vigor, and we're going to do this step three times. And you can actually use the Invigoration Paste right here as kind of like a counter. So you're going to use it until you have 70 Invigoration Paste left over. Uh, each one of these steps is going to use 10. So you'll do this, well, three times. So you'll do one Protection, three Stabilization, three Protection, uh, this will end with 10 buffs of each one of these, uh, which is pretty handy. And then Invigoration Paste times 10 to use up all of those buffs. Uh, with all of these, that will essentially make applying the Invigoration Paste completely free. And then we're going to take all of those buff stacks and turn it into Vigor. And again, we'll repeat it three times. Okay, next up we're going to build up our stability. So this is fairly simple. This is fairly similar to the previous step. However, when we're applying our buffs, we're going to do four stabilization instead of three, and then we're not gonna do another protection. So this is because the effect and lightness gums, they don't use any stability so really all we care about is building as much stabilization pace because each one of these is going to give us 50 stability so we're only going to do this step once So from here, we're going to roll the rest of our boons. Uh, remember, in the previous step, we applied both the effect gum and the lightness gum. So that's going to target our two other boons. So it's kind of trying to uh, min-max or use these gums more effectively. So uh, we're going to stack our buffs. So one protection, three stabilization, three protection. That's going to give us our 10 stacks of buffs. And then we're going to use Corrupted Compound uh, up to 10 times until we get the Fly Fast and Real Speedster Boons. Uh, if we happen to get other types of boons, we're going to deconstruct. So this is our other time that, you know, if we don't get the right thing, we're just going to have to start all over. Uh, if we're successful, we're going to do Vigor Catalyst to wipe the board clean. As you might suspect, we do want to use up all of these buffs, even if we get these boons uh, already, because we're right now we're you know essentially we're trying to roll the boons, but we're also trying to build them up. And then after this, this is probably the most tedious step. Now that we have all of the boons that we want, we're going to build a massive amount of vigor, and this vigor is then going to last us for the rest of the forging process. So we're literally going to repeat this step. Uh, basically seven times or we're going to use up all of the vigor paste we have left. If everything goes extremely smoothly, you technically don't have to use every last invigoration paste. You might be able to leave the last 10. But for the sake of learning this method, it's probably better to brute force and go ahead and use up all of your vigor paste.
and from here we're going to build our boons so it's going to be simply uh, stack our buffs so protection stabilization followed by more protection then corrupted compound times 10 to use up all of the buffs vigor catalyst to reset it and then you just rinse and repeat until you have maxed boons Now at some point your stability is going to get a little bit on the low side, so as you continue to build your boons you're going to do the same thing, you're going to stack all of your buffs, uh, however after stacking your buffs if your stability is less than 150 you're going to use any gum until you get above 150. Uh, the reason for that being is it takes 150 stability to stack your boons. Uh, and by using the gum, you're not using any stability, but that stabilization paste is giving you back 50 vigor a pop for using a gum. After that, you're going to use your corrupted compound uh, times the number of buff stacks that you have left, and then you're going to use vigor catalyst to reset the process. Uh, it's a good thing to note that if the forge thinks you're going to use more stability than you have, it's going to throw out a warning that, hey, uh, if, you, if you do another step, it's going to break the item and you're going to fail the forge. However, if you have all your buffs off, it's kind of a false warning because at that point, you're not using any stability at all. So it's a little bit annoying, but not much you can really do about it. So at this point, you're just going to rinse and repeat until you have maxed boons. Now at this point, yay, we have max boons, but you also probably have a few defects that are maxed out as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to Vigor Catalyst to clear all debuffs. Then you're going to use the defect removal until you get the desired effect. And then setting resin to finalize the process. Now to qualify this desired effect, if you take a look at the grapple, you can see that each time you use it, you're using 250 energy. However, if you have the energy defect that increases that energy cost, even if it's a pretty high rank, it only adds like an extra 16 energy drain. And when you take it in context of how much energy it's already using, that's essentially a drop in the bucket. It's like you might as well not even consider it at all. So you could just, you know, if all you have is an energy drain debuff, you might just go ahead, save yourself a lot of money on this defect removal solvent and just leave that defect on there. However, if you're going for kind of like a prestige piece of like, you know, this is something I sh am showing off, then you might want to go ahead and rip all of those uh, energy debuffs off uh, just to have, you know, your quote unquote perfect forged uh, lucent piece of gear. So, uh, but however, just keep in mind that that energy defect uh, is really a moot point at the end of the day and it's probably not worth the coin uh, to rip it off. Uh, certainly like anything like a durability or reduced range, uh, things like that, you're really going to want to get those off. But rambling aside, we now finally have our perfectly forged Lucid Grapple. The only thing left to do is to of course slap that setting resin on it and wait for it to essentially cure. And I'm sure while you're waiting for it to cure, you'll jump right back in and forge a second one. Uh, because if you have one, you gotta have a second one. And yeah, actually after forging this one, uh, that was about the last thing I wanted to do. And uh, really didn't want to look at the forge for about a, a day or two. So. Uh, but anyway, that was the tutorial on how to forge Lucent gear. You can use this technique on essentially any type of Lucent gear. Uh, just keep in mind that depending on what you're forging, it might have more boons that can go on it. And so you're going to have to pick your boons or your gums rather uh, wisely and uh, hopefully minimize the random rolls to as few as possible. I could see maybe stretching to get two random boons if you need to take a different component with you, uh, but much more than that, and I think you're just going to end up pulling your hair out trying to essentially win the lottery, so to speak. But 
Anyway, this was Javita. Thanks for watching. Again, huge thanks to Wake and Bake for sharing his technique. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. And if there's anything you didn't like, please let me know down below. Also, if you like my channel and want to get cool perks, check out my Patreon page. Until next time, peace. Yeah.